Good afternoon and welcome to Unbox Lunch. Before we get started, please know that this event is being recorded. I'm Jenny Williams, Associate Director of the Archives of American Art at the Smithsonian Institution. We're thrilled that you're joining us for lunch. Um, and soon my colleague, uh, Jacob Proctor, who is the Gilbert and Ann Kinney New York Collector will also join us. A few housekeeping items before we get started. At any time during the webinar, you can submit your questions in the Q&A at the bottom of the control panel on your screen. Closed captioning is available. You can access captions by clicking the CC button on the right side of the control panel. Now, I'd like to welcome and introduce my colleague, Jacob, who will be uh, featuring the newly acquired papers of Paul Smith. Hey, Jacob. Hi, Jenny. Hello to all of our uh of our guests. Um, as Jenny said, I'm the Gilbert and Ann Kinney New York collector, and I'm here in the Archives New York office. And it should be, I'm excited to get into these papers. Um, I'm feeling very sort of humbled today because I know that there are a lot of people uh, probably watching and certainly other people on the archive staff who are much more knowledgeable about this collection than I am. But uh, uh, I'm, I'm excited to uh, to get into it. Um, so hopefully if there are questions that I don't know the answers to, people can drop them into the chat or um, or what have you. Jenny, I think is gonna keep an eye on that. Correct. Um, so as probably many of you know, Paul Smith was, an, uh, I think it's fair to say a giant in the field of craft, um, founding director of what is now the Museum of Art and Design. Um, and this is a very large collection. Um, it's about 70 linear feet, um, and it really reflects uh, his kind of extraordinary stature in the field. Uh, given that stature, I thought I'd try to do a little bit of, um, you know, playing a couple of the hits, but maybe focusing a little bit more on B-sides and demo versions and things that might not be quite as familiar, even to the people who know this, um, who know him and his work very well. Um, so I thought an early place, a nice place to start. It's also nice because, you know, Paul Smith was a very long time friend of the archives, worked um, as a consultant with us for many years and planned this, uh, this donation for, for quite a long time. And so it's quite well organized. Um, a lot of it is already in um, archival uh, containers, which is great, which means that even it's in its unprocessed state, it's quite accessible, which is nice for researchers. Uh, so I thought I would start with uh, PJS early years. Let's see what we've got. There's some, uh, I think maybe I'll skip past the elementary school um, and kind of get into maybe some of his earlier professional uh, activities. So here's a good one. So this is a folder called window display. And um, this is, this is great. It's a, uh, so there's, I'm gonna, there's a letter from here, which is from the Crescendo Gloves Company. And I'm gonna read it a little bit to you. And I'm gonna switch my camera, see if it works today. It's sometimes a little finicky. Um, there we go. So dear Mr. Smith, it has been it was with great pleasure that we wired you on Tuesday. This is from 1956, May 31st, 1956. Congratulations, you've been awarded the third prize of $100 in the Crescendo Display Contest. Letter and check to follow. Um, and there's a whole bunch of stuff from 1956. Um, there are a number of their, so he was doing, uh, he was doing window displays uh, for, um, for a department store uh, in Buffalo. And his window displays are like really, really interesting. You know, this, so these are, um, from what I got, these are probably some kind of adhesive decals or maybe actually probably painted. Um, directly onto the window. This is for the Harper's Bazaar look. Here's another one. We're painting values for the whole family. Um, here's a kind of more elaborate tableau. Um, and I thought this was interesting because, you know, sort of around, around this same time, you know, there are a number of doing window displays was actually how a number of other art, artists, uh, and I should say that he, he was an artist um, before becoming and I guess simultaneous with becoming a curator and a museum director. Um, but it reminded me very much of the sort of window displays of people like Andy Warhol and Robert Rauschenberg and mm -hmm. Jasper Johns. Um, so I thought that was a kind of interesting bit of biographical knowledge um, and early work that maybe people 
uh, wouldn't be quite so familiar with. And there's, there are a lot of them. I mean, this is a whole, you know, it's a pretty large stack of eight by tens um, documenting a lot of different, uh, different displays. So for the, uh, the aspiring biographer or um, other kind of researcher that might be a particular bit of new information. Um, what else do we have? We've got, oh, this is, so this one says YWCA. And what do we have? We have, there's a, a brochure for the craft department at the YWCA in Buffalo, New York. This is from even earlier. This is from 1954 and 1955. Um, and then there's this great picture of Paul Smith giving uh, an enameling demonstration at the YWCA in Buffalo. It says enameling on copper. And so this is really, um, I mean, I just, I just lo always love all of this kind of early, early uh, work by people who go on to mm -hmm. greatness. Um, there's another folder of things that he did um, at the, uh, the Art Institute of Buffalo. There's a bunch of clippings, which are all nicely already sort of protected in, um, in these envelopes. There's some Polaroids of... Um, are they, oh, this is cool. I didn't see these before. Well, some Polaroids of an early exhibition of, um, so it says, if you can read that, but Paul J. Smith, um, Paul John Smith, uh, Walter R. Garver, and Paul John Smith. Um, we'll see uh, these great Polaroids of early, uh, looks like, I guess, early installations. Um, So moving on, put these back so they don't get lost. So of course, you know, he's most well known uh, for his really groundbreaking exhibitions. Um, and we have uh, some great photography, especially of those. This one, this box is labeled museum installations. Uh, and this is, this is kind of just the tip of the iceberg in terms of the, the photographic uh, documentation and also exhibition files with research. There are a lot of research files, um, both for specific exhibitions, you know, these kind of crazy groundbreaking group shows, um, as well as individual artist files um, about a lot of different artists with uh, many of them uh, tracking their careers over the course of decades, many several decades. Um, so here's a folder. This is uh, cookies and breads. Um, this is like, this is a. So here we've got. Let's see. Let's see meet, meet me at camera two, and we'll look through some of this stuff. Wow, that was a very odd tonality. Um, so it this is, is uh, <laughs> it's very orange, but this is a, a brochure or an invitation or this, uh, or I guess it's a sort of advertising post for cookies and breads, the baker's art. Um, and there's some correspondence related to it. Here's um, another, there's a card. Um, I thought that there were photographs of this show. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so, so here we have a, uh, I don't even know what kind of animal this is. That's um, This says, cookies and breads, uh, Sicilian bread sculpture with sesame seeds and raisins by Salvatore Purpura. Um, oh, that's nice. And this was at, um, this was at the, uh, the museum here in New York, which was at the time called the Museum of Contemporary Crafts, which is now the Museum of Art and Design. There's another, what is this? This is a Ukrainian wedding bread from the Poltava region. And, you know, this is not my field of expertise, but from what I understand, this was a really, uh, really far out of the box kind of exhibition uh, to be doing. Um, at the time, you know, this exhibition is uh, 1972. 
So let's see what else we've got. This is a, oh, this is a nice one. Mind extenders. This was uh, in 1969. Um, very uh, sort of of its moment exhibition, sort of looking at craft artists um, using things like numerical systems of control, holography. Um, yeah, so mind extenders, an assembly of new tools of design. And, you know, I thought this is, this is pretty, because this is exactly the same thing that's happening. This really demonstrates sort of the kind of artificiality, I think, of the barrier between art and craft, because this is at exactly the same moment that you have shows like software and information um, happening at museums like MoMA and the Jewish Museum, which we're looking at sort of a different set of artists dealing with very similar kinds of technologies and control uh, and concerns. What Here's was the date on that exhibition? What's that? That was uh, 1969, April to June of 1969. Um, yeah, and these aren't really organized, uh, particularly, like, especially chronological. They're sort of chronological, but not exactly, because I think this is later. This is, uh, I mean, the Great American Foot. Um, this is from 1978, <laughs> so we're jumping ahead almost a decade here. Um, so there's ephemera. There are these great installation uh, photographs. Um, and you can really see, uh, I think, and I should actually, I, I saw a folder earlier that, um, you know, where he was, he was also doing, uh, I think you can still see the influence, at least as a, as a novice in this, of, you know, that early retail work um, in that a lot of these exhibitions are really taking up commercial modes of display. Uh, which is really interesting, sort of like trade fairs and ex worlds expositions and even just store displays, um, which I guess makes sense for an exhibition that is uh, focusing on um, on shoes and I guess feet in other <laughs> in other creative contexts. Um, here's a an invitation um, to the to the to the to the show. Anyway, there's a lot of Good stuff. There are also a research files um, having to do with all these shows. I think I mentioned, but they're a little bit, they're a little drier um, in terms of uh, in terms of their uh, their visual uh, interest. Um, oh yeah, this is another nice one. Plastic as plastic, um, which was. Oh, when was this? Thing? And none of these photos are dated, but I'm sure that somebody on the call knows exactly when this <laughs> when this exhibition uh, was mounted. It looks to me like it must be late '60s, um, early '70s. Um, but this is like these crazy, <laughs> these crazy constructed forms. So here's a nice some some. Uh, oh, focus. going to have to switch again. This camera always kind of gives up on me at the worst possible moment. Jacob, we have while you're uh, adjusting, we have a question about the processing and when might the um, a finding aid this be be pro formally processed and a finding aid available? Um, well, generally, it's usually, it's within 18 months to two years. Um, this is a big collection, but it's pretty well organized. So I would assume that once it, once processing begins, it would go relatively quickly. Um, but as I said, we it's also, it, it right now it's closed because it's in our New York office where we're not able to serve it to researchers. But as soon as it arrives in Washington, um, it'll be available uh, even before it begins to be processed. Um, and then it'll be off limits while processing is happening. And then the finding aid will go up. Um, but from my uh, kind of cursory <laughs> skimming, I think if there's anything that researchers are interested in um, and they know it's a particular show or a particular interested in a particular artist that he was um, uh, that he worked with, it's probably not that hard to find even without a finding aid because everything is quite well organized and labeled. Oh yeah, so plastic is plastic, 1968, 1969. So this is uh, I'm gonna have to just kind of, do what I can with this and just we'll just have to live with the glare. I mean, it very much kind of of its moment, um, very space age, 
Um, but this but this this sheet of um, of this is this feels like a much more recent uh, print. Um, and there are a lot of uh, contact sheets and negatives in the collection that are pretty hard to see uh, in this context, but are really um, rich, rich, rich resources in terms of um, information about these various exhibitions. Let's see what else. There are also, you know, there are all of these. Uh, so this is a designed for production. Um, Again, you can really see the kind of retail. Uh, I mean, it's a really amazing uh, installation style uh, that he had in addition to uh, the content of the shows. I'm, uh, I would love to see a sort of, uh, yeah, this is <laughs> this one, this one. This one is uh, a show with, I don't even know what this this folder actually is not labeled, um, although it could probably be figured out pretty easily uh, which exhibition it is. There also are some great, uh, you know, photos of him, or a lot of photos of him opening exhibitions at various places in the world. Here you have him opening a WCC exhibit uh, in Peru in 1968 uh, and apparently he's with the president of the of Peru um, is I'm not sure which of these other gentlemen the president of Peru was but apparently he's he's there um, or oh yeah so here's the preview this is a folder the preview of this show objects uh, um, objects USA um, from 1969, this one which toured all over the all over at least all over Europe. I'm not sure uh, if the tour extended outside of Europe. Here, this is from, taken in Edinburgh. Um, this is also Edinburgh, and this um, oh yeah, so also uh, the same. And this. Uh, so there's a lot of um, a lot of this, like many, many, uh, you know, several boxes um, of photography. And there was one that I, I was, where is it? I wanted to, to pull out because I thought it was, well, here's a, here's a good one. This is another really uh, kind of, you know, particularly sort of, um, zeitgeisty uh, show. This is um, an exhibition from 1970 of House Rooker Co. Um, live. Uh, and it's this is the sort of um, exhibition brochure. And you know, you can see there are people like bouncing around in this kind of environment, a giant pneumatic mattress made of Perlon reinforced vinyl supplied by an aggregate which provides continuous air pressure. Um, this, this is just the uh, kind of archigram style pneumocosm in New York, um, kind of montage sort of plans for, uh, for the pneumocosm, a pneumatic dwelling unit in a vertical urban structure. So this is really, um, I didn't know this project at all, but this is really fascinating in terms of um, the mind expander too. Seat for two persons above the head of the couple, a plexiglass helmet with audio visual effects. Um, I mean, you really cannot get more 1970 uh, than this exhibition, which is, I just think is amazing. Um, and again, there's, uh, you know, there's great, let's see if I'm holding this right side up, there's great photographic documentation um, of all of these uh, installations at the museum. I just wanted to note that one of our guests um, made a comment about including a link to a finding aid that documents exhibitions sponsored um, by the um, by the ACC. Oh, great! Yeah, this is like this is really uh, um, really amazing stuff. So here, mm. 
There's a lot of material. Here's just one, one photograph. There is a lot of material that relates to other collections that we have. This is the next photograph of a Dorothy Liebes exhibition. Um, and so this, I'm sure that this, I, I might guess, and someone like Liza um, or Mary could probably correct me, but I would guess that this collection is going to touch on, I don't mean dozens at least of other collections that we already hold, because it seems that he just knew and was friends with and exhibited just about everybody in the American craft world um, between 1960 and 2020. Um, it's really uh, quite comprehensive. Um, and yes, the Dorothy Levy papers are ones that, that we have and our sister Smithsonian unit, the Cooper Hewitt in New York is opening up a exhibition on Dorothy Levy's. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you can really tell, I think how, you know, there's also, I'm not sure people are as aware, but he was a very prolific photographer. So there are boxes and boxes of Jeldon Silver prints um, of the he that Smith photographed artists primarily. Um, they're often grouped according to their primary medium, um, but they're also just a lot of kind of like, uh, they're very casual. You can sort of see how at ease everyone is with each other. Um, and a number of them are, have the, are kind of hand colored, uh, which is kind of interesting. So we'll have a, you know, there'll be a, some prints that are not colored and then he's hand tinted a number of these. This is Marvin Lepovsky and Bob Arneson um, at a conf an ACC conference in Oakland. Uh, this photograph is undated, but someone probably could figure out what it is. Uh, this is Dale Chihuly. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1985, um, this is a little different. What is this? Toshiko uh, with students. So there's a kind of range. These are sort of glossier, um, but you know, there, it's, there's just like there. There's this is Castle Studio. You know, it looks like this box is primarily from 1985. This is a. Uh, yeah, what did I just do to my desktop? This is like a whole box of these, and this is just a, a tiny, tiny selection. Um, Warren Selig, yeah, this box is all from 1985. Um, and you know, there's others. There's like there. You know, um, and I wonder if he was doing it since a lot of these come in. Somebody maybe maybe somebody else knows this. A lot of these photographs are in the kind of uh, air. Uh, light tight bags that you know that the photo, that photo paper comes in from the manufacturer so i i'm guessing maybe he was somebody could knows did he do his own printing uh it, it looks like he may very well have done it this is wendy uh mariama uh this looks like 91 or no can't quite tell what year this one is like uh in the studio uh, Lloyd Herman, Mexico, 1992, another hand colored. Um, Glenn Kaufman, this was back to 85, so I guess they're not entirely, uh, they're, maybe they're kind of mixed up together. Uh, another, this one is dated 1988, Bob Stockdale and Sam Maloof. Oh, this one is crazy, Peter Vokos. Um, at the ACC conference in Oakland also. Um, and this one is also has a lot of hand, sort of hand tinting, um, both, it's not, it's not so easy to see um, on the, uh, um, on the screen here, but you know, you have, who's this, Tommy Simpson. Oh, somebody, uh, okay, great, yeah, Kathleen Mangan, um, who donated the papers, thank you. Uh, yeah. It's confirming that he did do his own printing. Um, which is very cool. So there's, I mean, th there's a book here uh, <laughs> for sure. Um, and I don't know, it, it, there's a lot of preparatory material that looks like it was like he was at least planning books of some of these photographs. I'm not sure if they, uh, if those books were already, were actually published, but if they were not, um, <laughs> that is definitely the material is all here. Um, there's also a lot of correspondence 
um, and you know, boxes and boxes of correspondence. Um, but I thought I would just call attention to there's a binder, um, all of correspondence with Lenore Tawney, uh, which also another collection that we, uh, you know, another connection to our existing collections. And this is like, there are all these amazing sort of hand collaged postcards. So this kind of great also connection with our, um, our very deep collection of mail art. Uh, so I think that these definitely qualify as that. I don't know if you can see, but this is all, um, try not to touch it. This is, although I guess it was <laughs> through the mail. <laughs> um, it's fairly sturdy. This is a pap cut paper collage. Um, and it says, it snowed yesterday. And he said, uh, to the snow be there earth. And it's Job um, 37. Um, and then you can't, it's, this is all a little bit hard to decipher, but Lenore Tawney, uh, September 19th, 1977. Um, you know, so there's a whole binder of, of these. And I'm sure that there is also more uh, kind of, I don't want to say mundane, but kind of more normal <laughs> correspondence um, as well. Jacob, we have a question. If we have collected the papers of the Frank Lloyd Gallery at Bergamont Station in Santa Monica and his exhibitions. I, I do not know the answer to that question. Um, I'm sorry to say. But whoever is asking the question could go on our website and search our collections um, and it should come up very quickly if we did, uh, if we do have those papers or gallery records. Um, we do have um, we do have a bulk of records that date from 1988 to 2003. Um, however, I don't um, know the crossover with Paul Smith, but that's certainly something that we can look into. Good question. One and, that stumped us. Yeah, one one thing that I was um, sort of I don't know surprised is the right word, but there's a lot of material um, from James Lee relating to and. Uh, to James Lee Byers, um, which I was not really expecting in this context. Um, here's a letter, here's the envelope that Byers sent from, uh, this is from Documenta 5, um, so in, uh, in uh, the spring of 1972. Um, and it's, there's, so first there's this kind of, um, and then this amazing, Buyers like kind of like amazing, uh, almost like uh, constellation as letter forms or letter forms as constellations. Um, and this is only the most legible on the screen. There's actually a lot of other buyers material that is very, that just isn't possible to show uh, in a context like this. And so I was sort of wondering, I was like, how, how is, you know, well, what's the connection here? And then when I, for some reason, I can't find the, the folder now, but there is a show called um, Made with Paper. Oh, here it is, uh, at the museum, where buyers, uh, there was one of the kind of amazing things in this show was there was this huge, here's a photograph, you know, this huge installation along the, so my, my <laughs> video is not mirroring the way. Uh, uh, and this was, uh, this installation, I believe was a buyer's um, installation of water soluble paper. Um, and so it was laid out uh, on the street and we have, there's some image photographs um, of, I think this must be testing because that doesn't look outdoors, of installation and then from what I understand, this is 1968, by the way, uh, November to January. Uh, the New York City, um, oh yeah, here they are preparing the street. Uh, the New York City Department of Sanitation uh, came through uh, with the with their street cleaners, and it then the paper just completely dissolved. Uh, so I think that must, and this is another. This is an exhibition that involved a lot of fluxus people somehow. Um, I'm almost positive that this is Barbara Moore um, right here. Uh, and there was a performance and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed uh, given that Fluxus is my area. Uh, can't remember who, 
who the who the artist who organized it was, but there's a kind of fluxus um, event uh, also at the Craft Museum at the opening of this show. So wow, we're that was fast. Yeah, we're out, out of time. time. All right. Well, thank you so much. This is the Jacob. tip of the iceberg. So it is. How about it, it? It most certainly is. I just wanted to note that um, one of our guests says that there is a book, uh, Masters of Craft, which he published um, oh, with yeah. a lot of those artist photos. And then also, I thought this was a great way to end that, um, you know, your point about uh, the border between art and craft being artificial is right on point. Um, so thank you to everyone who joined. I know there are lots of people who are interested in record and in, in seeing the recording. So hello to you and thank you um, so much for participating. Jacob, it's always good to see you and thank you for introducing this collection to us. Please mark your calendar for um, May 21st for our next Unbox Lunch. We look forward to seeing you then. Thanks, everyone. Have a good weekend. Bye.